Hello boys and girls, it is Mr. Rossi again. I am here today with our reading lesson on how sometimes when we're reading um, folk tales, fables, or fairy tales, that it's not only words that can be tricky, but also sometimes the way that sentences are written. So sometimes we have to think of sentences as parts, read them, figure them out, and then go back and put them all together. Now, when we're figuring them out, we're taking a look at things like signal words, uh, the words like, if, or, but. Um, those are places that break sentences apart. So we can look for those breaks to help us put sentences into smaller chunks. Also things like punctuation, commas, quotation marks for dialogue. Those things are also helpful for making sense of a longer sentence. So today I'm going to share with you the story Cinderella, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Uh, this version was written by Barbara McClintock and some of the sentences in the story um, are a little long and they take a little bit to figure out. And we're gonna talk about what that looks like at the end of the story. We're gonna go back and take a look at a few of the pages. But for now, I'm gonna share the story with you. And then at the end of the story, I'm going to share a couple of places where I felt like the sentences were a little bit longer or a little bit more difficult and we needed to stop and think about what they meant. So here's the story. Once upon a time, a nobleman lived happily with his sweet and gentle-natured wife and their young daughter. And when his wife died, he took another, who seemed as sweet and gentle as the first. But no sooner was the wedding over than the new wife revealed herself to be the mean and jealous person she truly was. She couldn't stand the way that her new stepdaughter's pleasing demeanor made her own daughters look silly and selfish. That is why she gave her stepdaughter only rags to wear and made her do all the worst chores around the house. The poor girl swept all the floors, washed and dried and pressed the laundry, scrubbed the stairs, and cleaned and scoured every dish, pot, and pan. At night she slept on a thin mattress in a dingy attic while her stepsisters had a lavish bedroom and all the luxuries they wanted. Her stepmother ruled her father with an iron fist, and the poor girl knew he would only scold her if she complained. So she suffered in patient silence. After a long day, when her chores were done, the girl sat by the cinders near the fireplace to keep warm, which is why she was called Cinderella. But the older stepsister, who was meaner of the two, called her Cinder Bottom. Despite everything. Cinderella in her rags was still a thousand times more beautiful and dear than her spoiled stepsisters. One evening the girls were invited to a grand ball that was being given by the king's son. The stepsisters were all a flutter about what to wear and how to arrange their hair. And what will you wear, Cinderella? they teased. Cinderella sighed. I'm not going, she said examining her tattered clothing, but she wished to go with all her heart. The stepsisters asked Cinderella to help them dress and put up their hair, because she could make whatever she arranged look beautiful. But they couldn't resist taunting her. Can you imagine Cinderbottom at the ball? asked the elder. They'd have to follow her around with a dustpan while holding their noses, said the younger one. Both squealed with laughter. Cinderella resisted an urge to yank their hair. Instead, she patiently made them look as pleasing as possible. The time came to go to the ball. Cinderella watched as her stepsisters entered their carriage and drove away. Once they were out of sight, she began to cry. A kind stranger appeared and asked what the matter was. <laughs> I, I wish. Cinderella was crying too hard to talk. But this kindly woman who was really her fairy godmother said, I know. You wish that you could go to the ball. Oh, yes, said Cinderella. Well, then, said her godmother, let's get busy. We'll start with this pumpkin. Now, 
bring me four mice, a rat, and four lizards. This did seem a bit odd to Cinderella, but she found four mice and a rat in a trap and four lizards behind a garden pot. The godmother raised her arms and said the magic words, Fumus Balumus! In a flash, the pumpkin grew into a golden carriage. The four mice changed into four handsome gray horses. The lizards became four liverymen, dressed in shining emerald green, and the rat turned into a portly coachman with a jaunty mustache. Cinderella was amazed. Now, one more thing, said the godmother with a smile. All at once, Cinderella's tattered rags vanished, and the most beautiful dress imaginable appeared in their place. A pair of tiny glass slippers graced her feet. My dear, her godmother said, you must be home before midnight, because at the stroke of twelve, everything will turn back to what it was. Don't forget... Cinderella thanked her godmother, stepped into her coach, and rode away. When the prince heard that an unknown princess had arrived, he rushed to greet her. He gave Cinderella his arm, and together they walked into the ball. All eyes were on this charming stranger. The ladies studied her so they could copy her hair and dress the next day. Even the king and queen admired her beauty. The prince asked her to dance. Her astounding grace enchanted everyone. By the time dinner was served, the prince was so smitten that he couldn't eat a bite. He gave Cinderella a plate of oranges as a gift. She brought them to her stepsisters and served them with kindness. They were dumbstruck that this unknown beauty would pay them any attention at all. Suddenly, Cinderella saw that it was quarter to twelve. She curtsied and quickly left. When she got home, Cinderella told her godmother all about the ball and how much she wished she could go the next night. Then she heard her stepsisters at the door. Oh, you were so gone so long, she yawned, pretending she'd been sleeping. The most beautiful princess came to the ball, said the younger stepsister. And she gave us oranges, said the elder. I'd love to see her, said Cinderella. Won't one of you lend me an old dress so that I could go tomorrow? What a joke, both stepsisters laughed. Lend a dress to a filthy cinder bottom? Ha! Cinderella smiled, a secret smile. The next night, the two stepsisters entered the ball, followed by Cinderella, who was dressed even more beautifully than she had been the night before. The moment she arrived, the prince was at her side. They danced all night, chatting with the ease of old close friends. The time passed sweetly and so quickly. Suddenly, Cinderella heard the clock strike twelve. She ran as fast as a startled deer, and she bounded down the stairs. One glass slipper fell from her foot. Outside the palace stood a pumpkin. From beneath it, four mice, four lizards, and a rat scurried away. Cinderella's elegant dress turned back to rags. The prince ran after her, but all he found was her little sparkling shoe on the stairs. He held it close for the rest of the night, thinking only of the mysterious princess who had run away with his heart. The next morning, the stepsisters were beside themselves with excitement. The prince had made a proclamation that he would marry the girl who fit the glass slipper. His valet would go to every house to try the slipper on the foot of each young lady in the kingdom. <gasps> Just think, the older stepsister said. What if the slipper fits me? <gasps> or me, wondered the younger one. Soon the prince's valet appeared at the door, holding the little glass slipper on a cushion. First, the elder stepsister tried the slipper on, but without success. Then the younger stepsister tried on, with no luck. May I try? whispered Cinderella. You! sneered the stepsisters. What a stupid idea! But to everyone's great astonishment, the slipper fit Cinderella's foot perfectly. When Cinderella pulled the matching slipper from her pocket, the younger stepsister fainted. 
The prince was overcome with joy. Within a few days, a great wedding took place. Cinderella and the prince were married. Her father gave her to the groom with great pride. And Cinderella, in her kindness, forgave her stepmother and found each of her stepsisters a suitable nobleman to wed. They were all terribly sorry about how they had treated her, and everyone lived happily ever after, forever and a day. So I hope you enjoyed that version of the story. It's very similar to the classic version that I'm sure you're all familiar with. But now I wanted to go back and take a look at the very first page. So if we take a look at the second sentence on this page, which I know isn't a super long sentence, but it is trying to say a lot, we can see that it is broken into three distinct chunks, each separated by a comma. It reads, And when his wife died, he took another who seemed as sweet and gentle as the first. So we got a lot of information in that sentence. We know that Cinderella's mom is no longer alive. We learned that her dad then remarried in the second chunk of the sentence. And in the third chunk, who seemed as sweet and gentle as the first. Now, because we have some background knowledge about this story, it may help us figure out that last chunk of the sentence, but who seemed as sweet and gentle as the first is the last piece of the sentence, and it almost seems like it's leading us down a path to try and figure out that she seemed sweet, but when you seem something, that usually means you're not. So the author is already alluding to the fact that the stepmother is not a nice person. So if we put all of those pieces together, all right, we, we get a lot of information about what's to come in the story. We know that Cinderella it no longer has a mother. We know that her father is remarried. And we know that her stepmother isn't really the nice person she seemed to be at first. Or at least that's what we inferred by the way the sentence is written. So let's take a look at this next example. First sentence on this page. Um, it is broken up by commas, which lets us know that there's a few pieces of information in it. And the author is basically giving us information about what Cinderella's life is like compared to that of her sisters. Uh, it says, at night, she slept on a thin mattress in the dingy attic, while her stepsisters had a lavish bedroom and all the luxuries they wanted. So we know that it's telling us the beginning part of the sentence that her sleeping quarters were not very nice and basically that her stepsisters had very, very nice places to sleep and got anything they wanted. So it gives us a little insight into what uh, Cinderella's life is like at her house. So part of what good readers do is they take what they see and they break it into smaller chunks in order to better understand it especially when a sentence may be confusing or just have a lot of information in it. So today we're going to practice that in our own fairy tales, folk tales, and fables. So when you come to a sentence that may be a really long sentence or maybe a confusing sentence because it has a lot of information in it, I want you to practice breaking it into smaller chunks. Tackle each chunk maybe by using the punctuation in the sentence or by using those transition words that we talked about earlier to kind of tackle each part of the sentence and then put it together to figure out what it means. So however your teacher decides to have you display your work today, whether it's on a sticky note where you took a picture of a sentence that you took some time to figure out or if you're typing it into your Google, Google Doc or if you are responding on a Google form, um, those would be some of the different ways that your teacher is going to have you show some of those tough sentences that you were able to figure out by using these strategies. So good luck on your reading today, readers. Have a great day.